Coach James, thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, good day to you. You know, good to be here. You know, there's no one I spent more time with in my high school career than you. True. Can you believe that? True. Yeah. I I probably spent more time with you than at my own house. From there were, running, there, there were some times swimming, there, yeah, yeah. Then practice, great times. Sun yeah. hadn't even come up yet, huh? No, we're out there. Working. No, it's uh. I just want to make sure I'm recording because sometimes I forget that. It is uh, it, it it is crazy how certain things in life mold you to where you're wanting to be, and you don't even realize the molding is happening until you look until later on. You know yeah, what I mean? Until you look back. Like we're talking right now. Like I'm planning on running. I'm training for a marathon. Yeah, and here crazy. we are. And Both here we runners. are. Both runners. And uh, and and people are like, "Are you sure?" I was like, "I can do it." I don't know. I mean, I've never ran 26 miles before, but I'm like, "Ah, we'll figure. We'll, we've done. We've done." We've done worse. Yeah, you know what distance is, and you know what it's going to take. Yeah, to get I know what there, it's going to take, and, and you'll be able to survive when you get in it. The only difference is the pace is a little bit slower. <laughs> yeah, the pace. The, the uh, pace eight thirty now is hauling for me. Isn't that something? Eight nine. I read eight yeah. nineteen yesterday, and I was like, "Woo!" Out of breath, like yeah. dying. Yeah. To think that that used to be like I don't know. We probably ran like seven thirty pace back in the day, and then to think what your son runs. Or what he did run. What he did run. Yeah, yeah, like five minute, you know. Now when he runs, he has a little limp. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Pace is all relative to conditioning, but yet age mm. creeps in on us. And, yeah. And affects our pace. It's it's an insane something thing. Something that grabs a hold of but us. But the hard part is our mind. minds don't realize that we're slower. No. That's no. the hard part. No. In your mind, you're still the fastest you've ever been. Yeah. Until you look down at your watch and you're like, whoa. Oh, yeah, that was a nine minute mile. I yeah. <laughs> you're not just... what, what am I doing? <laughs> and man? then now with the technology, with the head, like... This show is sponsored by Resilient Real Estate Group, powered by eXp. So, you're thinking about buying and selling soon? Yes, we know you probably know a realtor, your mom's best friend's cousin's neighbor, puts her face on the local shopping cart. But you know what? Our friends at Resilient Real Estate Group have helped hundreds of thousands of people sell houses over the years, and they definitely know what they're doing based on their five-star review on Google and Zillow. So, it doesn't matter if you're looking to buy a million-dollar house or a fixer-upper, make sure the next time you're thinking about buying and selling real estate, you give our friends a call over at Resilient Real Estate Group. And now we're back to the show. Uh, like my, I have one that like tells me every five minutes what my pace is. It's like your pace is nine thirty. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. And how many more miles do we have to yeah. go? Yeah, you're not gonna believe it. I get in a, my first five k in in years, and we come by the uh, mile mark and seven fifty three, <laughs> and I, it was uh, four fifty three. Yeah, you know, that's what it <laughs> yeah. felt like. Oh yeah, I thought I was going so All fast, in. so fast, and here I was going. I gotta win my division. You know, I'm 58. I've got to win my division. And there's this guy in front of me that I'm thinking is about my age. And I sprinted to catch him at the end. And it was all I had. And he beat me by a foot and a half. Oh. We get to the award ceremony and they start with the oldest first. Well, he was 68. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the 65, 69 oh, division. Man. And, you know, my hands went up like, yeah. oh boy, I think I'm going to win my division. <laughs> but here this old guy had. Now I'm that old guy several years later, but. It's still fun to run, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I was talking Pace to a buddy. Is I was talking to my buddy today who ran his. Uh, he he runs. He ran a marathon last year. Uh, he's a major league umpire, and uh, and you know what I miss in, is the ability just to go do it and go run eight minute pace, seven thirty minute pace, and not and almost enjoy that run. You yeah. got to get through the level of like the the hard part to point where it's like, oh, I'm gonna go run five miles at eight minute pace and. And just like, and that's cruising and it feels good. And, you know, yeah, runners who can do that, they can go uh, three to 12 miles, whatever it is. They get in that comfortable state and they just go somewhere else. And there's having a you check time. out. It's yeah. a walk in the park. Kind yeah, of thing yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm not there. I'm there for about two miles, mm -hmm. but the first mile is laborious and difficult and, and it's a tough task. Of course, I live in. Where there's a hill, so yeah, I know. where That's I the worst go, part. I gotta go back up the hill. Gotta go back up the hill. But then there's a mile or two in there that that I went somewhere else and I had a good time and peace and talked to God along the way. Mm -hmm. And then that last mile back or so, I'm thinking I'm not doing this tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> this hurts. I know. Is it? I'm right back at it. Yeah. The crazy part about it, people don't know how I met you, or is you were my freshman baseball coach. Yeah. And you ran in college, a little 415 mile over here. Yeah. Ran out in the desert. I snuck. I snuck a little snuck one right in there. there. Yeah, no yeah. big deal. Four fifteen, and that just we were talking about before the podcast baseball and that lens that I can see based on being on a professional baseball field for so many years. The the lens of just seeing a four fifteen mile, 
and knowing how truly fast that is is something that 99.99 percent will never even know yeah yeah no i i yeah i get that i think at the time i didn't respect it yeah you know it's 1977 and <laughs> yeah you know uh somebody's mark bricker during that time's running 406 or 407 and i'm like gosh i'm not even close to that yet mm -hmm. you're right 415 416 was was fast yeah was, i wish i'd have respected it a lot more especially running nine minute miles now yeah isn't that crazy uh i was i was saying that to someone today i was like man i should have ran a marathon back then yeah i could have gone and ran one no problem you bet now now uh how many years i've been uh you know like 18 years later now i'm like oh let's do it now so it's 18 years since i think you graduated so let's see i graduated in 05 can you so, believe that yeah to think that much time has gone by already it's yeah. insane. Well, we were just talking about your son turning 25 today. Yeah, 25. I mean, today. shoot, I knew you in 2001. So how old was he in 2001? He, what year was he born? Uh, 99. 99. So 98. 98. So 98. he was I three right when I met you. Yeah. Your son was three. Yeah. When I met you, met you guys. Yeah. And I'd come over the house, and, and swim, was, and he, you know what I mean. He's out there doing, doing Do, running there. around in circles. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, I think from an early age I knew he would he would run. But going back to those days, uh, you know, some days you'd knock on the door, wake me up. Yeah, you didn't know it, but yeah, I was barely getting up, and here we were getting in the backyard, and you were treading water and doing it, laps. It's crazy. And... I don't even know how that whole started. Like I wish sometimes I wish I had like a video of a, a movie of my life to think like what was the moment? What was the moment? It was like, hey, we need to start training in the morning. I don't, I don't I don't remember. I know it was after my sophomore year, and I was like, "Oh, we're gonna train." Was it like? I think it was like, "Are we gonna take take this serious finally, or or something?" I don't yeah, remember. It was related to that. I think uh, we started uh, weight training. Yeah, we started weight training. Coach, the coach of the the head coach of the cross country program was like, uh, "Double workouts are good, but we don't want to wear the legs out." Yeah. So we kind of went to the weight room a little bit, and. And I think somehow we just got in cahoots and said, hey, a, a little bit of extra work in the mornings. Yeah. Uh, before season starts or before school starts. And mm -hmm. even we'll even go through that a little bit. Yeah. I remember I would pull up because I didn't have first or second. So I'd pull up like a third period and like the security guard or whatever it was be like, Were you, did I see you running this morning? I'm like, yeah. I said, yeah. I was like, I've seen you every morning running. I was like, I run every morning. He's like, oh. He's like, how time do you get up? I, like to think, like we used to get up at like five thirty to yeah, go. Yeah, it's crazy. Like yeah. the di but the discipline now that I have step kids, it's like the sooner or later you can gr be grained to have a schedule and then get up early, like and let that be the normal. And that's the norm, like yeah. getting up early, having a schedule, having a routine. The sooner or later that gets grained in you. Like that is like the most successful way to be like the the stepping stones to be successful in life. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. You came to baseball tryouts in a cast. True. I know. A broken arm. Did it, were you at tryouts or no? I don't remember. Yeah, I was yeah. at tryouts. Yeah. And and you wanted to participate. No, I'm okay. I can come out yeah, there. I can not? do it. Yeah. You know, There's no other options. And I remember your mom was like, "I don't think he should be trying out with a cast." Yeah. And just. Just yeah. be patient because yeah. I don't either. Yeah. But let him win this thing and let it, let him know that we respect that. Yeah. And then you know months later he came back. And, yeah. So you're you know, you're a runner, college. I was a I was a runner in high school. So what made you make that slide over to baseball? Because you're still doing baseball. You you're still doing lessons. You doing you're helping your son now. Your son's coaching a high school team. So it's like you were known for a runner. What was where was that transition into baseball? Growing up, I was sports. Mm -hmm. I was sports, so I wasn't in the house at all the way kids are now. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. a lot of things that hold them inside, electronics and stuff. But I was outside, and I was playing basketball during basketball season. I was playing football during football season, and that was that was tackle football. You know, yeah. in, the, in the parks and in the, at the schools. Uh, the schools were always open to us growing up. And then you know, it was baseball season, and I was baseball, and I loved baseball, and like most kids. I was going to be in the major leagues. And I was going to be a California Angel someday. Yeah, you know Jim Fergosi and and the rest is history. I was going to take his spot, <laughs> but um, over time took me took me seven and a half years to graduate from college and get my teaching credential, my master's degree, and stuff. And and I always wanted to coach, and I and I wanted to coach uh, cross country and track. Uh, there's a 
element of spiritualism in that, you yeah. know, that running and it's an individual team sport. You know, you got to, you got to take care of yourself, but you got to score high to help your team, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, and I just knew, uh, the kind of person that I am that I, I felt like I could inspire these kids to do stuff that they could, uh, never thought they could. And so I went from juvenile, I went from a Christian school to juvenile hall to, to a local high school. And while I was there, uh, during my interview, the principal asked, do you coach? And I said, yeah, I'll coach anything, but I'd sure like to coach track. And they said, well, we have a track coach, but uh, I'll let him know and he'll come and talk to you. Well, the guy never came and talked to me. And, and the story goes that Tom Kennedy came to me and he said, hey, uh, I know you love sports and I know you coach a little baseball at one of the Christian schools in our area. I could sure use somebody like you. He had been spying on me. He had an office uh, that was attached to my classroom. So he had been kind of paying attention to me and how I treated kids and stuff and talked sports all the time. And so that's really how I, how the door opened. And I said, you know, let's wait and see if the track coach asks me. So wait till after Christmas. And um, he, he didn't come to me. So <laughs> there I was out there coaching JV uh, baseball with, with uh, you know, the team out there, the Huskies. Yeah, but, uh, and people don't, Kennedy is Adam Kennedy's dad. Yeah, Adam Kennedy, who played for the Angels, won the World Series in two thousand and two. So just yeah, like, at, at that time he was just uh, Coach Kennedy, and Adam Kennedy was a junior in high school. Oh, is that when you? He, he, he was he was a stud. Yeah, he was somebody that I, to be honest, I looked up to because he was hard nosed and mm -hmm. and played the game hard, and I liked that. Yeah, I liked that. He it was, knows that. It was great having him on the podcast because like he, it was like he was a to see like the transitions like what it actually goes through to be to get drafted and go through all that stuff. It's like all the little things like that. No one ever thinks about no one like, no. like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go to the big leagues. The process to get there is like the unknown of like, okay, you're going to get drafted. And then that, then you're going to go to this little city and that's little city and this little city. Like yeah. the process is very overlooked when it when people think about going to the big leagues. And maybe that's why I look at like when parents come up to me like, Oh, my son's so good. I'm like, okay, well you're about like, 30 steps away from going to the big leagues yeah. like there's i mean like even me like you know people always say like uh oh you were so close i'm like not really like i still had a good five to six more steps they're like yeah but you were doing nah dude i was so f i yeah, still was from far of you it looked like you know you're pretty close, yeah but you know? it's like to know guys that are close like it's a totally different world you know what i mean yeah it's yeah, different yeah. there's a difference between a, a being a very good high school baseball player and being a pretty good minor league player and then having a shot to make the majors that's a that's a huge step that's an elite group yeah those are the group those are the people that are uh scoring in golf tournaments yeah there, it's crazy They're i uh one percent and not even just athletically just like i knew a lot of athletic guys they just didn't have the mindset to handle the the big lights and that's something i also think people like overlook it's like it's go time like there's no like yeah you know what i mean like yes. everyone wants the fame but they don't realize what comes with it yeah fortunately fortunately i saw that and for me i knew i had to prepare my my three kids mentally yeah for the challenge because uh i knew i knew they were going to be runners uh i knew one would be baseball because he wouldn't put a ball down yeah. everything was ball he was just like me growing up and i knew i had to make them mentally tough because i had seen so many good stars come in their freshman year or you know you i don't know if you've heard of the eye factor you know they come come out and they've got the uniform on you're going oh man this guy looks yeah. great but he's got the mind of a two-year-old exactly the, you know, he just doesn't have that inner intestinal fortitude strength to say i'm gonna I'm yeah gonna go beyond that's a i think that's a level that a, a lot of people just don't know yeah. that yeah. it's like a level obviously like maybe not like you know it's the ability to just totally check out and just zone in and not care about anything else mm -hmm. but that. And that is very difficult to do. It's very difficult to do. It's similar to you getting up at 5.30 a.m. and meeting me at my house. Yeah. By the way. But now I struggle to get out of bed at 4.30. So now I actually, I, I'm like, uh, now it's like all these little hacks. Because I feel like uh, the hard part that people don't understand is when you're in this level of like comfort, like ability where you're comfortable, it's very difficult to push yourself outside of that comfort zone. And that, and then you find out really, really quickly, like how bad you really want something, 
and if it's it's and you have to do it for so long before yeah. you see any results yeah out at the high school where i'm coaching at right now we have a uh, a college player that that called up my son through a connection and he said hey i'd like to come out a couple of days a week well he's been there every single day yeah so he understands exactly the time that he has to put in and hope that he gets better yeah and he's been in the cage or with us every single day that since he's asked if he could come out so that's dedication so so what made you feel like uh you know obviously in your your uh teaching career you you work with uh uh you know people say special ed kids but more or less i think like lack of focus you know what i mean i feel like they're they're not they're you know they have downfalls of other people it's just harder for them to focus on direction and obviously what people don't understand is like they also don't come from the best surroundings and I think surroundings is so like such a major factor to kids that they you don't process. It's like how do you do well at school, but when you go home, your life is a mess. Like it just doesn't. So like, did you? What ma- naturally made you go into that? Like, did you just feel like you p- could pull out of those kids? You know what I mean? Maybe you saw a little bit of yourself with those kids. Like, what was the reason on going down well, that it, road? It kind of started like I was saying. I was working with juvenile hall kids. Um, you know, when I got with that group. And I, I saw myself. I worked with these kids, and there was hard kids. There was wannabe kids. And then there was, you know, most of them are coming from an unfortunate situation in their community. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're stuck in a bog. Yeah. You know, it's hard to get out. It's hard to get out of the, you know, just the gang violence and whatever's there, you know. Uh, it's hard to get out when your family's a part of that. And so those kids end up uh, at risk, and then they end up at juvenile hall or or uh, non-public schools and while I was there there wasn't a student and it wasn't a kid there that I really didn't identify with that I mm-hmm. hadn't met growing up that I hadn't been like him in a yeah, few yeah. Those situations because I grew up in in uh, North Indio and in, in pretty rough pretty rough neighborhood and you had to you had to fight to survive and you know I was in seventh and eighth grade in Coachella and you got a sixth fifth sixth seventh eighth grade in Coachella and that's not easy being. And Coachella is not what it is now. Yeah, a little it, skinny guy. I yeah. mean, I had to, I had to survive. And so, working with those kids, I identified with them, mm-hmm. and I, under, I felt like I understood them, and vice versa, they understood me. And I think just the average person getting training in college, uh, yeah, they get some training, they get some understanding, but you know, you, you don't know what it's like to run a marathon until you've run a marathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we were talking about earlier, yeah. you know, what it's like to be, you know this particular kid and unless you've been around that growing up and i think it made a huge difference for me so i gravitated to the harder the harder kid but i didn't leave uh i didn't leave those kids that wanted it like you know like an adam schwartz yeah yeah, yeah. you know i knew you wanted it and i said okay i'll find the time yeah i'll give it away so is it is it inspiring to you that your kids have like followed in your footsteps and and You're almost, saying I have three teacher, I have three kids, and I have three teachers. Yeah, in my home. Uh, yeah, it's inspiring. I'm, I get scared for them. I'm a, I'm a father, a dad, and I know how uh, challenging and difficult it can be. Especially nowadays. Especially nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. My kids, I, I, I want to say that they're unique. They got, you know, they saw how I grew up, and they saw how I managed my life, and they have seen how I've treated my students and you know a lot a lot of teachers don't say my kids but any any student that i've ever had i've you know my kids this Mm -hmm. or my kid that and and some people think i'm talking about my kids at my house you know yeah but you know when you love kids you love kids and so i see my i see my kids and they they paid attention and they come home with their stories and it's exciting and I feel a little anxiety sometimes, mm-hmm. like you do when the bell rings. Oh, yeah. man, here comes the next group, you know? Here comes the next group of kids. I feel their anxiety sometimes, but I also see their passion. Yeah. And, you know, you get a paycheck at the end of the month, too. Mm-hmm. And it's a decent check, so I think that inspires them as well. Yeah, I think uh, it's crazy how different it is now to be in school. Like, I mean, it's just, you know, I have stepkids, and one's just a freshman in high school, and just, like, to see what she has to deal with. Like, I just think it's so much harder on kids now. They have no escape from reality, not reality, but from their lives. Like, 
you know, when we, when I was a kid and especially when you're a kid, like I didn't have a cell phone until junior high or until I was a junior in high school. And the cell phone was just a flip phone that you could text. Yeah. Now it's like, you know what everyone's doing at all times. Everyone knows yeah. what you're doing. Like you can see if you're being left out on things, not left out on things. Like it's just such a level where it's like, can they even handle, can kids, and I don't even think adults can for the most part, but can kids handle that much Stimulation, consumption yeah, of, consumption. of life? Like of what is going on and the the ability to judge or not judge themselves or how they compete with, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. I think it's a, a level of like, I'm interesting to see if it ever goes the other way where kids are starting to be like, you know what, I don't need all this in my life. Because I think even adults can't handle it for the most part. Yeah, it's a crazy time. You know I can waste no time, no time, because I got to keep it tight. Give me my bag, my bag, my bag, my bag, got my eyes on the price. Mm. You know I can waste no time, no time, because I got to keep it tight. Give me my bag, my bag, my bag, my bag, got my eyes on the price. Mm. You know I can waste no time, no time, because I got to keep it tight. Give me the bass, give me the beat, give me my bag, this round is on me. Give me the bass, give me the beat, give me my bag, this round is on me. it's a crazy time it's a crazy time yeah i still think uh i think there's room for investment for men to invest in in um in baseball teams yeah you know, yeah, yeah and make a difference in a child's life they yeah. still need uh they still need heroes yeah you know and you don't have to have an s on your chest and you don't have to have a million dollars but just to go out there and roll a ball out and and until a kid good job or mm -hmm. hey that wasn't done right let's do it again and do it right this time those are good things i think we we live to where um you know we can't uh you know make a kid run yeah right hey team this you didn't do this right yeah and there's a penalty for this so mm -hmm. we're going to run out to center field and back and you got to make it in you know 20 seconds or we're going to do another one yeah and then you for some reason uh parents or society looks at that like it's cruel and unusual punishment but i look back and i'm thinking of the men who made a difference in my life they disciplined me in sports yeah you know or they disciplined me disciplined me in in the classroom and i accepted it it made me a better person mm -hmm. discipline's discipline's good, good well me. i think it's it's not even discipline -ish. i think uh for how i look at things is like every action has a reaction positive or negative and you have to realize there's always a reaction to your action or lack of taking action, positive and negative. Like, and if you don't want, if you only take the negative away and you don't make people realize there's a negative outcome to your outlet, that's when really bad things happen. Like, I don't, you know, like, I think sometimes going back to the sports world that I lived in, it's like you would see these like big athletes, you know, like we had, um, what was his name? Josh Hamilton. You know, I had him coming back through the minor leagues when he was rehabbing from whatever his drug problems were. Or I had this big prospect with uh, St. Louis kill himself because he was drink, drink, drunk driving when I was in the Dominican. And, and it's yeah. like because they live in these bubbles that no one wants to tell them that anything is wrong because they're a top prospect and they can hit a ball. But it's like maybe if someone would have gotten in their corner and said, hey, this is an issue, like your your actions are going to turn into a negative reaction – Maybe things would change, but I think it's like you have to realize that that is what it takes is every action. As much as you don't want to realize there's a reaction to that action. Yeah. And it's very simple. And but when life happens, it's like, you know, then you're shocked. You know, well, I'm seeing that at a whole new level because I see my son as a he's a head baseball coach at one of the high schools in our area. And he is talking about his experiences, his successes and his failures. Mm hmm. You know, and the, I'm going back to the word discipline again, but, but uh, you know, he had to pay the price. Yeah. And, you know, he's saying, hey, guys, when, you know, we can't miss. Yeah. When you miss and you come back, there's a penalty to pay. Well, and, and he's it, teaching them the world to work, too, you know. And that's the thing, too. It's like when it comes to, you know, in life, there's everything is hard. Like, I look at, like, what's crazy to me is I look at people who live paycheck to paycheck or even worse, like homeless people. And I'm like, that life is so hard. The the nervous that you have. And I've been there before where you're like, how am I going to pay rent this month? Like, 
the pre it's like you're gonna deal with it you're gonna deal with pressure one way or another wouldn't you rather have it over here where you have to perform all the time and you have pressure on you to perform to a high level and that if you don't do your job someone's gonna be upset at you or whatever it's like but then your life that you get to live is so much better it doesn't make any sense sense to me yeah i remember when uh my oldest uh matthew went to college and he wouldn't get the job done. You know, that first semester, first year in college is difficult. For, that's, for it's students. an eye-opener. You know, yeah, it's an eye-opener. He's leaving the house for the first time. You know, he's a couple hundred miles away. And uh, his coach comes to me and says, hey, don't worry about Matthew. He's going to be okay. <laughs> you know, we're taking care of him. We've got him in some tutoring, and I'm, it's the first I heard about it. Uh, yeah. Every time I talked to him, he said things are great. My yeah. grades are awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I had the one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. Mm -hmm. And... I could see that he was stressed out while I was talking to him. And yeah. it wasn't just that he was in trouble from his father. It was, oh, no, you know, I'm not getting, I'm not taking care of business. Yeah. And he didn't like the feeling of it. Is that? That's my point. You know, yeah. he didn't like the stress of it. Like you were saying, like, you know, I don't have any food in my refrigerator, but I also have missed work for the last 90 days, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, so there's a cause and effect here, isn't there? Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, my kids have learned that if I put in the work, that stress level, you know, those weights on my shoulder, they won't be there. Yeah. There'll be other things, but, yeah. you know, I'm, I, I can take care of the things that I can take care of. And, and I think they've done a, a pretty admirable job of that. They got their degrees. So. Yeah, they've done something and they special. Have they, they have jobs. They have jobs and they have degrees. Yeah. Uh, for you, like, obviously teaching the way that you taught, I feel like, you you know, obviously I knew you as a teacher and you had, like, a different style with the students, maybe because you, you fell with them and you kind of gave them a little bit more. Was that a struggle for you to be in the the system and trying to do it a little bit different with the students? Yes. So, you know, at a, at a public high school, you have uh, – that's a good question, by the way. You have uh, – you know, you have administrators. You have your assistant principals. You have your principal, and they come and go. Mm -hmm. And so they're – so that means you have uh, new personalities come in that really appreciate what you're doing because uh, for some reason, if if somebody came from a group home, they always seem to be in my class. Yeah, right? You know? Yeah. And wait a second, I have five group home kids in my class and nobody else does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I started to see the pattern and I think the APs, the assistant principals that, that <clears throat> worked those kids into my class respected me for it. Uh, you know, for some reason, it's all about, it was all about test scores for so many years. And, you know, we, we, we didn't, we didn't test the social aspect of a child, you know, yeah. these young kids are, you know, dad's in prison or they just got dropped off from mom and dad wasn't home last night. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody knows it. Yeah. Well, when they walk into my class, I, I could see something on their face. And so you know, I try to pull that out of them a little bit. And let them know that when they come to my room, when they come in that door, it's going to be okay for an hour. Yeah, and it's uh, and it's it's crazy just how much. Uh, what year did you retire? I'm um, three years. Three years. So 2019. Yeah. 19. So you missed the boat. You missed the I, the craziness. I missed the COVID the craziness. craziness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just so crazy. Like I graduated mm -hmm. in 05, and I remember for like a good like four years, maybe five years, I would like stop by, be able to like come check out your class, come chat yeah, with you, whatever. Good. Good and time. then it's like the shift of like not being able to like do anything, like yeah. to get on campus or whatever. Like the the craziness, how the world has like, like locked entering a prison, entering a prison. It was yeah. like I had to check in with this person and this person and this person. Before I used to drive to the back park, walk into your class. You know what I yeah. mean? How different the schools have changed. What just a bummer, like, huh? I it, I feel like it just takes away from that ability to reconnect or stay connected with the people that have changed your life. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, you know, and that that goes even further. I mean. I mean, think about it now. Now, I, I'm working with some kids in baseball and, and uh, training some kids uh, out of my garage and stuff. And, and, you know, I don't mind hugging them, but I, I'll never forget Mr. Weishart putting his hand on my shoulder and saying, good job. Yeah. And when you looked at my work yeah. <laughs> as a freshman or sophomore in high school, it looked like a bunch of scribble. <laughs> and for him to finally say, you know, this is, this is decent, you know, yeah, like, good yeah. job. And I looked at it, and I think, you know, it's 79% or something maybe is what yeah. I got on it, you know. When you're growing up, you can look around and tell, oh, man, his, 
his home life must be pretty good. His shoes are brand new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you look at mine, I've got holes all in them. Yeah. And then you look at my paperwork and my penmanship is horrible. Well, that's that was my life. You know, I was, I don't know where I was coming from, you mm-hmm. know, going home and not sure exactly what I was going to have at, at the house, food or whatever, yeah. violence or something like that. Well, that hand on my shoulder from Mr. Weishart meant something to me. I don't know, know if he knew it. You know, kids made fun of him, called him Barney Rubble. But he put his hand on my shoulder and others from time to time. Not all the time. Yeah. But when he did. When the it moment meant was necessary. And then he told me something very unique. Now I'm in a I'm in a workshop English class. You know, I'm yeah. I'm in I don't want to say the dummies, but yeah. nobody knows who else was in there. Yeah, but yeah. I was in that class, man, and I was trying to learn to write a structured sentence, let alone a paragraph, mm-hmm. huh? And he said and I, and I know, you know, I was helping a bunch of other kids, but I, I don't know if I was really helping them other than trying to help them. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was trying to do something. And he said to me, Keith, you'll make a good remedial education teacher someday. And it was months before I ever figured out what remedial <laughs> education was, you yeah. know. But his teacher was at the end of that. Yeah. And, you know, you're talking about a guy from the barrio, you know, like a teacher? But he flooded my mind a little bit. You know, he threw a little tack at me or a little mint or a little chocolate. And I grabbed it, and I and over the years, you you know, it comes back around like, hey, you know, I could be something, I could do something besides a ditch digger, yeah. You know, in the Coachella Valley, I could do. I'm not saying that's the worst, but you know, goals. I'm starting to think of goals. I think it just changes the mindset of like it helped. It, it was uh, the mindset of like there's a possibility, you yeah, know, possibility, or we, you know, what you focus on becomes something if you have goals or now or, think about it. Mr. Weishart, I never got to go tell him that. Yeah. I wish I could have. Yeah. But he made a difference. And you know, there's a lot of those stories out there. Mm-hmm. A lot of those stories out there that they're they're untold, but teachers make a huge difference in kids' lives. Now, for some reason, the teacher's the bad person. Yeah. I'm I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but there's there's some amazing teachers out there. I think it's lack of accountability. It's easier to blame them than blame themselves. Yeah. Yeah, the structure of the home gets gets. Uh, but I just think in general in life, more people it's so quickly to blame others than to to own up to really truly look yourself in the mirror. And I think that's why there's a massive separation from non. You know, obviously the middle class is separating yes. for financial reasons. Things are way more expensive for the middle class. But I also think that the the difference between people that are doing the things that you have to do in life today to become successful versus what you used to have to do back in the day. I mean, to think like my dad could work at Stater Brothers for 39 years. My mom could bounce around jobs. And I used to live in Orange Crest because the house was 119 grand and we could have two cars, not brand new cars. We had two cars and we had a decent life. My family wasn't well off, but you could, you could work your standard job and make a living mm-hmm. to a point where you live in a nice area. Nowadays, that is impossible and now you have to increase your lifestyle or whatever it takes to get where you want. Like, it's not easy to get up at four thirty and 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 and, men, and read and 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 affirmations and and do all these things. But I think that the level of what it takes to be successful now is so much higher. So that's another reason why I think there's separation in the middle class. It's just life's. I think I feel like life is harder now. I could be wrong. Obviously, you would know a little bit better. But it's just like. It's just so much more now to everything. Yeah, the word progression or progressive is is not always the most positive. Yeah, word. you know, it could be. Yeah, I think we're progressively heading that direction. Um, maybe the lottery got in the way. I don't know, but but you know, rags to riches is very very difficult, and it's not just picking numbers. Yeah, you got to go out and work. And I don't know. I think we've made it a little too easy to get a check sent in the mail. Yeah. And therefore that lifestyle is, this is, this is good enough right here. I think that's the thing is like that, like I said, finding that being a comfortable is a terrible feeling. And I think because of yeah. social media, you see success and you don't realize and process everything you don't see is what makes that person successful. Like, even like for me, it's like, I, I'm on all these masterminds and I'm in these uh, accountability groups and all these things, but it's like, or I've read, you know, I've listened to a million podcasts, read a million successful books, but until you're in the room with someone and just see how they process things moment by moment, that is truly the difference between success and non-successful people. Like in whatever it is, in whatever it is, yeah, like for you homes, being a teacher, yeah. 
the moment that kid acts up in class, how quickly you can process what to say to him to de-escalate the scenario, to get on his side, that a teacher with the same amount of time you have, but the same amount of uh, schooling, maybe even more, doesn't have the ability and read all the books yeah. and all the psych books, yeah. but doesn't have the experience that you have to process that situation as quickly as you do and to de-escalate the scenario. And that is the difference between keeping that kid in class and making him feel like he can trust you to getting sent to the principal's office. And like you said, the moment that teacher put his hand on your shoulder saying, I'm proud of you is the difference. And I think that is the thing that people don't process. Yes. Yes, now we want to be mad at Mr. Weishart yes. because he put his hand on my child's shoulder. Yeah, yeah. I've I've had parents say, uh, "Don't ever touch my kid." Yeah, like wow, you know, you know. Let's spend a couple of hours uh, talk about the two years that I've had your son and uh, the for sure. he's made. But well, th and, they're not interested in that. And the thing is, too, is like just because you spend, and the sad part is, you're probably more engaged with their kids than they are. Than they are. And you know more sure. going on with them than, than you are. You know what I mean? And I think that is the the ability to just because you're in the room with someone doesn't mean you're connecting with that person. If all you're doing is watching TV, hands on the phone, whatever, you truly have to make an effort to connect with people nowadays. And you know what's interesting is I look back at the coaches that my kids had, and we played all sports, even bowling. But I look back at all of the sports that they played, and, and I did. I coached some of them. Uh, not all of them, but – Man, I sure owe a lot to a whole bunch of men and women coaches yeah. who coached my kids. Uh, I owe them a lot. They were part of the community. They were part of the that community that, that taught my kids how to be, uh, you know, adults someday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really showed them uh, more direction than I could at times. Mm -hmm. You know, I I owe it to those coaches and teachers as yeah. well. Well, it's like uh, you know when you think about like tribes as humans, right? Like. When if we go way back to when we were all in tribes or, or whatever, it's like the community took care of each other. Now it's like I'll worry about myself. You worry yeah. about yourself. It's like you just don't have the ability to do everything the person in your life needs. But it's like, no, I don't want no help with this person. People don't need to know what's going on. Don't tell anyone anything. Everyone leave everyone alone. And it's like the, the, the function of humans and COVID didn't teach us anything. Like We're not meant to be alone. We're not meant to not interact with people. Even if you're Zooming or calls, yeah. the human nature is to be around people and to interact on a level to make us not go crazy. Yeah, I live for that. I exactly. For Even though I say I hate people, I'm like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> like, I do this. And people are like, oh, sure you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this room has had some conversations that I would have never had without this room being possible. And, and, and that's the thing that people good are point. the Very conversations point. that I can have now with someone yeah. in a, in a, tw in a 2022 style like this, that now is out there forever to where your great, great grandkids will be able to watch this. Yeah. Cause of the internet. I don't think the yeah. internet's going nowhere. I don't think YouTube's going anywhere anyways. So yeah. it's like, we've never been flooded with more information, but I think we lack most connections with people. Yeah. So my very first year, uh, could have been my second year, in the eighties. I'm I'm teaching at North High School and uh Who was your principal then? Mr. Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf. And then later Mr. Kinnear. Dang it. Yeah, great great principal, Mr. Kinnear. You didn't have Mr. you didn't have Mr. Jackson? No. Oh, okay. No. Uh, we had a uh, Mr. Jackson, the band teacher. But. Oh, Mr. Jackson was uh, my cr cr my best friend Chris's dad. He was the first black president, not black president, black principal in Riverside. Oh wow! Yeah. What an honor! How yeah. cool is that? Yeah, yeah, I know. So he he taught at King, or he, yeah, he was the principal so, at North. So I had uh, I had this student, and there was a high school uh, exit exam test that you had to pass, or you couldn't graduate. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, ooh. And those were tough on us. Uh, teaching kids with learning disabilities because man, tests are difficult and yeah. retaining information. You know, you can't teach to the test, but you do your best you can to get them to pass that test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do all, everything. And th the third opportunity comes like toward the mid May so that the results will come out before uh, walking at graduation. And the results came come out like, let's just say May 20th. And this one young man passed. And I thought, you know, I'm going to call his dad. I'm going to give a call. And I call his dad, and he says, oh, oh, yeah, what's up, Mr. James? What did my son do this time? 
And I said, well, you know what? I don't usually call for negatives. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but what's up? Why are you calling me? And I started to tear up. And I said, well, your son passed the high school exit exam. And he said, it was a pause, and he goes, Mr. James, this is the first positive phone call I've ever received in my son's, all of his school. And I thought, dang it. That is such a shame. And I felt guilty, too. Yeah, yeah, but at, yeah. least, at least I, I was got one. one. At the end one. of his whole career, yeah, yeah. And I said, so he's going to walk at graduation. It was the best. And I saw them at graduation. You know, that's one of the best hugs you could ever have. Yeah. yeah. You know what can waste no time, no time, because I got to keep it tight. I mean, my bag, my bag, my bag, my bag, got my eyes on the price. Mm. You know what can waste no time, no time, because I got to keep it tight. I mean, my bag, my bag, my bag, my bag, got my eyes on the price. Mm. You know I can waste no time, no time, cause I gotta keep it tight. Give me the bass, give me the beat, I'm in my bag, this run is on me. Give me the bass, give me the beat, I'm in my bag, this run is on me. Give me the bass, give me the beat, I'm in my bag, this run is on me. Give me the bass, give me the beat, I'm in my bag, this run is on me. You know? Yeah. He was so proud of his son, cause everything had been so negative his whole life from teachers. Yeah. And what po- a bummer, huh? Dude, positivity is we so important. We find something yeah. along the way? I know, and that's the thing. Positivity is so important. Yeah. It's just such an important aspect. I think I think positivity and, and, and confidence can truly lead someone down a path that on paper they should not be there. And I've said this multiple times to people in person and on this podcast. I, I should be a janitor. <laughs> like, I truly should be a janitor. Like, I never went to – I mean, I, I didn't go to college. Like, my skill set, my, my grades aren't great. Like – and I have the ability to now do this and have a staff of five and an office and whoever else I get to touch and help out in this community and Your all these podcast, things, podcasts or, or donating money or, or connecting people or doing all these things. It's like the only reason I think I've gotten here is people like you that I, I was lucky to be around the right people growing up. Then obviously baseball really helped me out being around the right people in baseball. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, the confidence to believe like we could go do that. We don't know how we're going to get there, but we'll go, we'll go get there. We'll do it. We'll put a plan in place, and we'll try. And, and then at the end of the day, like, what's crazy is I don't know if you've ever thought about You probably have never thought about it. I have. But it's like, and in moments of time of the worst possible thing you think is going to happen can lead down a road that would have never happened if that bad thing didn't happen that completely changes your life. Like, let's let's run this scenario back Providence. for a second. Let's run it. Like, I, my last year in, in running, I was pretty good, decently. You right? were good. I was good. You won. Uh, you won league championship. I won league oh. champion, and I broke the twelve. I broke the Mount uh, Mammoth record for the twelve mile or thirteen mile race that hadn't been yeah, touched. Big in, Smoky. Big Smoky. It hadn't been touched in four years. Yeah. All these guys that were so much better oh, than yeah. me. All these names. Never, names. names the, record books. the names. Never. Here they, comes Adam Shorts. Just and I ran it by myself. But and anyway, you beat it. then I get co- and then I get COVID. Wrong word. And then I get bronchitis and I can't train anymore. And in that moment, it's like, oh my god, all this work, yeah, down the tube. Yeah, like, I, was I, th- I, was I thought we were gonna thing. go, we were gonna go under sixteen that year. Like, I was like, we're gonna go under sixteen, we're gonna be in the fifteens, like we're gonna run SAC in, in fifteen something. Like, that was the plan. And then it's like, pff, done, you know. And what's crazy is if if that never happened in my head, I processed many times. It's like, okay, well then I probably would have gone and ran at like a low D one school, maybe a high D two school, because. People don't understand. Like you got to be like in the fourteens, you know. Mm-hmm. What, what, what was your son at SAC to run at UCLA? What did uh, he run at SAC? He ran low fifteen, I think. Yeah, low fifteen, and then ran a what a four oh seven mile, and then he what eight four oh five four oh five, and then uh, right. sorry, and then uh, four oh he did run four oh seven one day, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. Ran, he ran multiple four oh seven below four ten. Yeah, and then what did he run in the two mile? He ran eight. 15, yeah, yeah. yeah. eight So that's how fast you have to run to be at a, an elite D1 school. Yeah. And so it's crazy thing. I would have probably ran at some D low D1 or high D2, would have done four years, gone off and done something else, and then I would have never gotten to baseball. I would have never became an umpire. My life would have never changed. We wouldn't be sitting right here. Yeah. From that one thing in that moment in time was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. All my hard work didn't pan out because of something I couldn't control. And then I love life for that reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like that's the, why I agreed to come on this podcast because you know, you think you've been inspired. Well, you've inspired others and yeah. myself. You yeah. Know? I know I can be a successful teacher because I made a difference in Adam's life. Yeah. Know? So I can, I can get the next. Adam is that why you're on. a, is that why you like cannot not 
step away. Coach, like stop coaching. Like you have to like. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm 63. Um, I'm not. If my wife was here, she'd give you a better answer. I say I don't have to do this, but uh, in my mind, I've got uh, I've got all these pictures of these kids that I have right now. Yeah, and I look forward to baby steps of their growth. Mm-hmm. I love seeing their their growth. I had a I had a mom come to me last year and came to me, and her son's coming two or three days a week. You know, I don't charge anything hardly, and and she came and I could see the frustration on her voice when she came into the backyard and. Uh, on her face, I could see the frustration, and and she goes, Coach James, when's he gonna get it? He hits so well here in the cages, and then yeah. we go to the tournament, and he and he struggles, and you know, it's just I feel so bad for him. He, I know he's better than this, and I couldn't give her a timeline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said hard work. Let's just keep hard work, not hard work doing it wrong, but let's make progression with our swing and you know with our throws and stuff, and then. It was like a week or two later, the dad comes in the backyard and, and gives me the same s- speech, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I hurt for them. Yeah. I think I live for that because there's a challenge there. And it was about two months later that they came to, both of them come to me in the backyard and go, Isaac went 12 for 12 over the wow. weekend. You know, and you got to go hide because you got tears in your yeah. eyes because you were hoping for that. You yeah. can't guarantee the swing, but you can hope for it. And, yeah. and that's what... That's what I live for, I think. So can I walk away from that? Maybe someday. Maybe I get tired. Yeah. I enjoy my backyard, but you know. But what else would you be doing? What else would I be doing? Yeah. yeah. I think that's the hard part is when you have so much going on to think that you're just going to like stop cold turkey one day is very very unlikely. You know, and and you paid me a compliment, you know, a minute or two ago, you know, guys like coach James made a difference in your life. You know, I didn't like that for years. Yeah. Don't bring me any attention. You know, every year at the banquet, they're giving me a standing ovation. I hated it. Yeah, you were always, the, like, the number one guy. Oh, oh, it was so – yeah, I didn't like it because the other guys weren't getting – I knew what the other coaches did. Mm-hmm. You know, they work hard too. Yeah. And I wanted them to be – to have the gratification of somebody standing up for them. But somebody came to me and said, Coach James, you know, where did you learn baseball? And I went, I learned baseball from other people. And they go, that's right. Yeah. You're not the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not the guy. Yeah. And he goes, uh, it was it was Coach Corona. And Coach yeah. Corona said, you know, you talk about all these other coaches. Those are the ones who shaped and molded you and disciplined you yeah. and got you in headlocks and taught you. And so now you're just passing it on. Receive the gratification because you're really a reflection of those coaches who made a difference in your life. And I got it. I finally got it, and I was able to accept some positives yeah. in life. You know, in my own life, so it was it was a good turning point for me. I think the hard part too, when you're a kid, you don't, you know, like I had Coach Peters in here, our cross country coach, and we never saw eye to eye as a, when I was an athlete. And like now that I'm 30 ish in my 30s, it's like now what sucks is that when you're a kid, you don't process that everyone has a part to play in the team aspect. Well said, right? Like, yeah. take take someone like Coach Corona. Coach Corona knew I didn't know. I don't think I ever saw him coach anyone in any track and he was the track coach for a very very long time but that wasn't his play in the track coach as a track coach his track he was the job that was the guy that yelled across the field for you he was the guy that was like he'd come to you like before your race and be like this is what we need Absolutely. you got to go out and do this Did, you know what i mean like and I, and i go back to think like how impactful coach Corona was as a track coach but he was kind of a jerk all the time. Yeah. He was the guy that we had a little fear, right? Even yeah, he was the guy that, <laughs> but that was his job. His job, that's what it was to keep <laughs> all the athletes kind of in check was Coach Corona. You know what I mean? He was the guy that would come to you and we ran the two miles. So that was the second to last event of the, of the day and the meet. And he would come to you and be like, you need to go. You got to He'd come to me and Dave, like, you got to go one, two. If yeah. you don't go one, two, we, because we had, you know, the greatest four by four team ever that yeah. that year in two thousand and four. Like he's like, if we're gonna go, we're gonna go one two in the four hundred. So if you guys don't go one two, like, you're, you're this ain't we ain't gonna win. And to be able to ha- have someone come to you and then you look and him go, you can do this. And that feeling of truly, he truly believed it. Like yeah. was a level of, but it's when you're a kid. 
you don't process that everyone has to play their part in the team. Mm -hmm. You just think like, oh, well, I like this person because he's not mean to me. But it's like you also need the other person to balance each other out. And it's like it's the things that you so don't realize. True. It's the things you so don't realize true. when you're a kid. Yeah. And that's what probably sucks being a, a teacher. It's like, you know, it's like, I, like I said, I mentioned all the time I have stepkids. And it's like I laugh. I look at them and I'm like, you're 14. Wait until you're 20. Wait until you're 34. Like you'll you'll process it right when you're 34 years old, or even Sienna, who's 20, 20 that works in my office. I'm like, I remember when I was 20 and I thought the same thing. It's like you think your world's over because of X Y Z or da 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 da, and it's like wait until you get older. Yeah. It is nothing. You got a parking ticket. What are you gonna yeah. do? Yeah. Oh man, the world just caved in. Hundred percent. Or like, what am I gonna do? You know what I mean? You're like laugh because it's like the ability. Uh, the ability of the things that we handle now, it's like, oh my God, that's like, that was nothing. Like that melted me down back then. Like yeah. now it's like a sniff. Like it's not even anything, you know? Yeah. I, I love those people. Like you were saying, coach Pierce and, and uh, coach Corona. I just love all of the roles that, uh, you know, coaches have played. Yeah, coach Pierce, a great yeah. guy knew nothing about running, had no <laughs> running shape. Right. His thing was just that he was the nice coach that was there to just be there, yeah. you know? And, he was the nice guy to help everyone out. That wasn't his play to yeah. be the jerk. Yeah, he was the planning guy. He was the operator in the background. Yeah. Putting things together, doing the paper shuffle. And he knew his place. And he knew his place. Yeah. yeah. And once in a while, there was a shout out yeah. that he would give. And, you know, it would be like, oh, my gosh, he noticed me? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. I think that's the, that's the biggest thing is like, man, if, there, if there's one thing I could go back and tell myself, it's like everyone is playing their part in your journey. Yeah. Be happy that they're playing their part. Yeah, I'm. I'm working with a, with a young man right now. He's 13, and I'm had him. I've had him for about a year, and I expected uh, more progress. Uh, you know, in the summer, I expected. Boy, when we get to summer, he's gonna be a stud. Well, he hadn't turned the corner, mm -hmm. and a guy that's been helping me, John. John said, "You let me take care of him," and I thought, "Oh, John, you're kind of hard, man. I don't yeah. know if he, this young man, can handle you." Sure enough, it was exactly what the doctor ordered, and John was get back in there, take yeah. another swing, mm -hmm. you know, and he'd get a few extra swings, and he goes, "That wasn't the swing I wanted. What do I expect from you? Yeah, good hard swing. Ten push-ups over there on the wall, you know." Yeah. And this young man is is risen to that, and yeah. he's, he's making you got to find out. I think everyone everyone does. You know, you you have to realize: do you excel with punishment or pleasure? And if you have if you have not figured that out with yourself, like. What do you do better in is when you hit something, you get a gift, or if you don't hit something, you have to give. If you ha that's the number one thing that you have to figure out with yourself. Well, I do that in life it, at home. Um, well, I'll just tell you, I on the way over here, I had um, I had greens, I had nuts, I had s two dates, and I had some coconut water because later on tonight, it my son's birthday you're gonna go ham i'm gonna have some you yeah have, i'm gonna, gonna have, have some, some sweet yeah. i earned it but i've already worked out mm -hmm. i've had a nutritious meal i'll have a i think we're having sushi yeah. i'm gonna go hog wild on the sushi but i'm gonna have something sweet later mm -hmm. on i earned that you know i'm gonna yeah. take but the penalty will be i'll be doing my workout tomorrow that, and it'll hurt and i won't I, like I feel it, a little sick to, but I, that's the negative i feel sick now like when i go ham like the night before on pizza and cake and a yeah. lot of carbs like really late i wake up the next morning like oh my god yeah, what I is wrong like with me after all yeah. i know 35 i don't drink I, soda at all no no i have a diet coke yeah. i have a diet i don't even coke enjoy it no nope i love canada it dry I'll, I'll i guess i was lying there for a second on occasion i'll have a canada dry one of those little yeah, yeah. small pop tops and have a little Canada dry ginger ale. Yeah, yeah. But that's it. Otherwise, it's a no for me. Dude, next year, next year is going to be hard on me. I have, a, I have a big list of things that if I don't hit every single week. A June marathon. June so marathon one. I can't drink until I make a million dollars. Good. No more drinking until like I make a million dollars. I have to be up every day by 530 out of bed. Okay. I have to do certain stuff with work every single week. Goals. Goals. And then if hey, not. Hey, listeners, this is who Adam Schwartz is. We... <laughs> <laughs> he met me at my backyard and mm -hmm. swam in that pool. It That's was crazy. cold. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just in the summer where it was a relief to yeah. go for a four mile run and then we yeah. come back in the pool and we we, you know, let our legs settle inside yeah, it. Yeah. No, you worked in there, man. I think Your I was very I was very on a, I think people underestimated the work that we put in. I don't think I don't think anyone in the moment in time I think we were doing things that sooner or later became the and I, maybe I'm wrong, but sooner or later became the norm on the team. 
but I don't think we had the 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 people on the team that could have handled that workload. No, we didn't. We didn't have the team. No, well, I'll be honest. When you left the starting line over there at that March Air Reserve base, oh yeah, 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 course that we had, it was oh, it was treacherous and it was arid, and there was there was gopher holes and mm-hmm. rat holes and I don't know whatever yeah. snake holes, and you left and 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 my vision wasn't great even then. I couldn't tell who was who, and then you on your way back, on the way back, there's a little uh, knoll to come over, and you crested that, and you were 80 yards in the yeah. front, you know, and you were talking about my son going to the state meet and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know getting a medal at the state meet, finishing third in the mile, and it's it was, I had just as much joy seeing you yeah. come at a league championship, and there you are coming. I think to that's win the thing that. too, because I know the hard work that's I, yeah, you know. I think and, that, and you weren't the most gifted runner. No, you worked no. for it, man. No, no, no. I mean, when you really think about it, I was only five nine. I was still probably the heaviest guy on the team at one forty. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I Everybody was else one twenties. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and they're and they're like you know taller than me. I didn't really have the built of and they have a running background. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's I, but, phenomenal. But I think, but I think that that's the thing is like you can't, you can't to to be upset that you're you obviously have great genetics, and your son obviously had greater genetics than you. You can't compare yourself. I could not compare myself to you or your son based on the lottery that you won yeah. of your genetics, yeah. and and to think that that's not something that exists. And be upset at yourself. You have to realize I've done the greatest with the genetics that I, ha- I have. Like, and that's okay. Yeah. And I, that and that I doesn't. Think what you know, God gave me, I used to the best of my ability. That's all you gotta say. And Tyler did the same. Yeah. And Adam did the same yeah. as well. You, you know, you talked earlier about, uh, you know, the sickness that you know you caught. Yeah. And, yeah. It's just something that got in your lungs, and it is what it, it is. is what it is. It made you the man that you but are But it today, played out to the exactly the way we want to play. Yeah. And and the thing is, is like, who knows? Probably want to be here. But I have learned when things – I have learned my by myself, it's like the as much as I hate when my back's against the wall, that is when true growth comes. Yes. That is when it will truly come from anyone is when it is going south. Yeah. How quickly do you just go like, all right, we might go keep going down, but I'm going to ride this ship out, and we'll pull it out. Yeah. But you know what? I think it was a gift that God gave you early, because I know there's a story that our listeners probably should hear, and that's your neighbor across the street that lost her oh, husband. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there you were, uh, not just mowing the grass for him, yeah. but she also lost her son who was staying at the house, adult son, and then you decided to help her, and it was just right across the street. Yeah from you and you went over and about spent story. the night there at the house I can't even remember this story. so that she could be safe because those inspire me yeah, yeah, yeah. right yeah so when 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 i don't want to do something yeah i'm not helping this kid you know i'm tired mm-hmm. they, they, they don't listen to me i remember these stories you yeah. know these true stories like you going across the street to help this person i'm mowing somebody's lawn right now, now. wow yeah i'm mowing so i'm not going to say who yeah, yeah but i'm mowing their lawn and I never asked him. I you just started mowing doing the lawn. It? Nice. Yeah, and he's he's gone to other people saying, "Why is, why is Keith mowing my lawn?" Because he's such a good dad. He's so busy, and you know the wife's a uh, uh, a nurse and she's working. Goes back to the tribe. Yeah, it goes back to the tribe. That's what I'm gonna do. And I just take care of that front yard and I manicure. And I really like doing it. And the strangest thing is, is I have somebody that does my lawn for me. <laughs> But, but it's, it's fun. It's but fun. It, I get it's, to do that. It's crazy. Like I think I say. But you this all, inspired me. That's my point. I, I tell people all the time is that if you're if you're not happy with where things are going, go find someone you can help. Yeah, true statement. I, it's the truth. I it, hope the moment you can go that. listen and go and help and, and ask Without for any nothing, reward. just go do. Just send a nice nice message to someone. Like something I do. Like obviously, a lot of people see us. Like. uh you know, post a lot of content and I know how hard it is. So I see, when I see agents posting and I, and I'll literally send a message like, Hey, I really like your videos. Like keep, sh- keep shooting content. Yeah. Like it's going to take a while. Just yeah. keep making them. And it's crazy. Like that one little thing can help out you so much. Yeah. And it's like, I sometimes forget that it's like, cause it's kind of weird sometimes. Like, is this person going to take my st- comment the wrong way? Is someone going to take my statement the wrong way? Like, you know what I Which mean? Which is what we were talking about in our society today. Yeah. Like, hey, keep, 
give a little grace here. It's like right now, I'm dropping right. my mom's dropping off uh, client appreciation gifts for me, and I'm kind of nervous. Like, what if a client's like, "Why did you drop this off on my porch?" Like, I'm nervous because of that right now for some reason. I don't know that why. You, yeah, you're giving and you're nervous. About I'm nervous how the reaction's gonna be. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you should, but I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 2022. Something yeah. happened in. 2019 and yeah 2020 and i just think that it's like i think we uh you know i can waste no time no time because i gotta keep it tight give me my bag my bag my bag my bag i'm my eyes on the price you know i can waste no time no time because i gotta keep it tight give me my bag my bag my bag my bag i'm my eyes on the price you know i can waste no time no time because i gotta keep it tight give me the bass give me the beat i'm in my bag this room is on me give me the bass give me the beat i'm in my bag this room is on me Uh, I think so many people are so I think we're just so embarded by like so much media and so much people trying to get stuff out of me that everyone thinks that you're trying to work an angle on them when it's just like I'm just showing your appreciation that you've shown me yeah you know what that's I mean? right that's right hey another story a similar story to an Adam Schwartz story <laughs> but uh, another young man maybe you should start your own podcast <laughs> Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, well, I'll I don't say. know technology that way. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Anyway, this young man, uh, he wants to try out for baseball, and he played Little League like when he was six. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to make the high school baseball team, and I don't want to take him through that yeah. experience. And I said, hey, how about track? So, <coughs> excuse me, he's, sure enough, he goes out to track, and um, he's a sprinter. And, uh, you know, he's a 200, 400 guy. He tried to be 100. He just wasn't quite quick fast enough, enough for that. Yeah. So his first race was like 63, hmm. you know, as a freshman. And yeah. then the next year he ran 58. Okay. And then he wanted to train, and he said, what do I do? And I said, well, there's this, there's this group over in La Sierra, and, you know, one guy has the national record that trains over there. You should go over there and train with him. Sure enough, he did. And he said, Coach, I'm going to use track to take me to college. Yeah. And I said, I'll, I'll tell you what, Travis. If you go to college, I'll be there on graduation day. Okay, so he knows my story. He knows yeah. it took me seven and a half years or whatever to graduate from college. And it took him seven years to graduate. Mm -hmm. And I was there. And I met his graduation in Oregon. And he got a track scholarship to Oregon Tech. And, and I'm there, and I'm sitting up pretty high because Carl and I, we flew out there yeah. spending this money. I told him I was going to be there. <coughs> and sure enough, I'm kind of leaning back. And gosh, dogs, there was like 600 people graduating. And I'm like, well, where is he? And here he comes with his cool glasses, you know. And in the meantime, through all of this, you know, you get there early so you can get a decent seat. And I wanted one that had a head uh, backrest, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm talking to this guy next to me. And he goes, well, who are you here for? I'm, I'm here for one of, my ad one of my athletes. And I said, I promised him I'd be here. And, you know, he calls me dad. Well, Travis finally comes around the corner. He's got these cool glasses. And somehow, you know, providence of God, he sees me. And, you know, here I've been talking to these people around me, and he sees me. Now, Travis is African-American. Yeah. And we're kind of in a, we're kind of in a white area, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, upper yeah. echelon white area. And, and he sees me, and he goes, damn, <laughs> really loud. And he's, you know, proud as a peacock because yeah, yeah. he's graduated from college. And I know how it feels, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is great. And I'm not thinking of a color situation at all. And these guys didn't know it, you know. And he's, Dad, I made it, you know. Uh -huh. I had already talked to him earlier on the phone. But anyway, he goes walking by. And this guy leaves for a few minutes. And he brings me back an Oregon Tech, a brand new Oregon Tech hat, because I had been talking about, man, I want to get something like a hat. I, yeah, you yeah. know, I'm ball headed I can't, <laughs> yeah. I have to wear hats everywhere I go. He goes back to his car and got me a hat, and with tears in his eyes, he's giving me this hat. And I'm thinking, I, I'm not sure exactly what I did, but I started to figure it out that he was impressed that I would take this young man, you know, under my wings. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. I want to make a difference in your life. Well, guess what the guy's doing now? Now he's in Arizona, and he's working as a counselor in a school, and he's volunteering out on the track because there isn't any more coaching stipends left, mm -hmm. but he just wants to volunteer. So he's given himself back, and it's a Title Title I school. I mean, it's a low-income housing community where he's doing the counseling at, 
and there he is giving back. All of that is worth it. Now, that's a, that's a risk. You know, somebody could say, who is this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With these kids, you know, is racist, dude. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, those are risks that you take, and it's worth it to make a difference in somebody like Travis's life. And here he is giving back now. That's a great story right I'm there. telling you, man. What did we just go back to? Plus, the guy next to me's impacted, you yeah. know, and his son was graduating that day. I hope he's a better dad, mm-hmm. and I hope he's given to the community even more, more than just a hat to somebody that's at graduation. Pretty and, cool. And you know what's crazy? Probably 99% of the people or teachers that you worked with over the years or the students that saw you passing would have never known any of these things. No. You know what I mean? No. And I think no. that's the most impactful thing is like – it goes back to like I'm telling you, it's like it's just crazy. The more and more I look back, it's like you need a tribe. You yeah. need the tribe around you. We do. And 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 you have to go find it. Like you have to go find a positive tribe because there's also negative tribes, and that's how you go down the bad roads. It's that the people around you, all the memes you hear on Instagram, like who you are, who you surround yourself with, blah, blah, blah. It's all. It's so success and being in life. And when I say success, not just financially, it is all the stupid little memes you see online that you think like, oh, oh, okay, it's who I surround myself with. All right. Oh, it's about getting up early and having a plan. Oh, it's about saying positive manifesting things. It's that simple. Yeah. Yeah, you're so right, Adam. It's so simple, but and you just have to be prepared for the hard times because the hard times are what really separate you because everyone's going to go through them. Yes, everybody's. Well, you got to get through those. Because that's what builds character. Yeah. That's what builds your strength, your inner strength. Yeah. You know, it, sometimes the blessing is not always giving the blessing. Sometimes the blessing is teaching kids how to fish, not just, you know what I mean? Go exactly. buy the fish. You got to exactly. go work for it just yeah. a little bit. I think, I think, I think the, I think things are underestimated is like having work and, and working something you want to show up to every single day and have that little bit of motivation and, you know, I think that is, and I think that's why the whole stifling check and not working, I think, I think is more negative on your life than people realize. I really do. Can be. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you doing now uh, in the volu- area of volunteering and stuff? Because I know every Christmas you're always um, putting things together and making yeah, a so in lives. Actually, I'm upset I missed it the other day. My girlfriend actually volunteered for foster kids on yes. saturday she she's really gung-ho about that she really wants to start giving back to foster kids she wants to adopt every kid she meets and i tell her no um that's neat she good, so she wants to do that um and then obviously we, we do a lot of things with our church so like we have a tree at our church that says uh for kids that have parents in, in jail so they that aren't going to get gifts yeah. so we give them we we, we yeah. take names off the tree and we give them gifts um oh yeah i'm not a big christmas guy to be honest because i don't i don't think just because a certain time of year you should receive gifts maybe something small but to think that i should spend a thousand dollars on you for because it's christmas and buy you a switch or an iphone it's unnecessary for me and yeah. i i don't like getting gifts that's not really my love language i don't really want anything from anyone like my mom did some running around for me to save time so I could do this podcast. Like yeah. that means way more than me than if you bought me a five hundred dollars cool. something. You know what I mean? Yeah, how cool. Yeah. Um the podcast has been really big. We did twenty something podcasts this month. Our goal is to do hundred and four this next year of all small businesses to inspire people. Yeah. So that's a big thing. Today I'm really helping uh real estate's down right now, everyone, obviously. So there's a lot of realtors who want to shoot content but don't have the money to do it. So I'm starting to offer that for free for them to come shoot here to help my competition, which whatever it it's, it's the thing. It's the tribe. Well, yeah. You, know you said I mean? community earlier. It's community. Yeah. So just Very things like admirable, man. Way to go. Things like that. You know what I mean? I think, uh, the bigger we get, the more money. I mean, obviously we're part of ump's care that gives back to kids in the hospitals. So we'll be out in January helping them. I'm on their, their subcommittee now to do things for them. Um, yeah so i think that's it you know what i mean um the podcast i think is big you know what i mean like i had a kid on here last week 21 very successful on instagram and tiktok yeah but needs help and you know getting getting life right and it's like and he we sat and talked for an hour after the podcast he's like you're the first person i've ever had like these conversations with you know what i mean and i'm asking him questions that no one's ever asked him before yeah you know what i mean and he's 21 and he's 21 years old yeah you know what I mean? I think that is very, I've been very blessed, you know what I mean? To yeah. have the right people. And, and you know, obviously 
I was, I, you know, it's like everyone wants to win the lotto, but it's like, maybe you already did, you know, like for me, like I have great parents, I had a great dad. I had someone like you in my life to help me that my dad couldn't, my dad is not an athlete. He's not a runner. Yeah. So then it was like, okay, we bring you in like, you know what I mean? And, and, and to think about my parents being accepting of being like, Hey, I'm going to go run with my coach every morning. I'm going to go swim at his house. Like to be like, this is what we're doing. Like, no, like care in the world. Like, yeah, this is what you guys are going to go do. You know? Yeah. Just that ability to do those things. Well, she had seen me in Little League. and Yeah. You know. But that's the, that's the thing is, like, the ability to just, like. And we used to trust the community a lot more. Exactly. It's different yeah. now. Yeah, it's different now. Um, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So Bummer. I think I think that's the thing. I think, I, I think the podcasting is going to be a real big thing for me. Um, I really want to have people on here that don't, you know, it's, I, I say this all the time, but it's, like, how many stories – the hard part with tech with Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, it's like the famous people are, are, are never going to be like, they're never going, the odds of you becoming that person is 1%. Yeah. But how many people be- could become you? How many people could become 20 other people I've had on this podcast that ha- lived a good life that have given back to the community that have, that are happy living, that live a good life. They have money. No. Are you driving a B- Bugatti? No, but, what people don't realize is there's a lot that comes with the Bugatti that even if you had a $1.5 million good car, point. you might not, you might not even want, you might not even like that comes with it. Yeah. You know, I, I have a, a friend that played in the big leagues for 10 years in the big leagues and you would think, Oh my God, he's so lucky. And he would tell me, he's like, I hate talking. I hated talking to the press. I didn't care if I went four for four. I did not want to talk to the press. The pressure to talk to the press after games was miserable to me. Yeah. And like, you wouldn't like, Oh, I want to be in the big leagues. It's like, what comes with that? Things that, like I tell you all the time, like, oh, don't you wish you'd become a big league umpire? I don't know. Maybe I would have got there and not liked it. And now I'm stuck doing this for the next 25 years of my life. Maybe I have enjoyed this life way more than I would enjoy that life. Yeah. I don't know. So I don't think I'm really missing anything because I'm just doing the things I love to do now. Just changed a little bit. Yeah. And I just got to go to the World Series, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, great experience. Yeah, huh? I get to go. I still, I still involved in that whole complete other life and get to do this life. Yeah. And I think I'll impact way more people in this life than I ever would have done in the one before. Yeah. The, conver- the before. conversations I've had in this room in the, just the last 20 days, what am I going to have for the next 10 years? Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I still have one of my students that, uh, or one of my baseball guys that you talked to a few winters ago during Christmas break. Oh, I yeah. had you come over to talk to this mm-hmm. group of 15, 16 yeah, kids. Yeah. And one of them still talks about you. You go, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the guy that was a major league uh, umpire. I said, well, majors, minors. Yeah, same close enough. He goes, yeah, now he's successful selling yeah. houses. And yeah. Uh, yeah, real estate, he's doing well. Yeah. He hadn't forgotten that speech about, you know, there's an alternative. If I don't make it here, it prepared me for my next step. Yeah, it's all it's all life like that. Coach James, I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, you know, I'm going to apologize. I don't do a good enough job for keeping up with you, and I want to say I'm sorry for that uh, because I forget how great our conversations are. Yeah. And I appreciate you. And all yeah, well, done. I love you like a son, you know. Right that. back at you. Yeah. So thanks, Good guys. Days. Make sure you uh, follow the podcast. Um, you don't really have anything to sell, so I can't really promote your company. No. <laughs> so if you have a lawn that needs to be mowed, call Coach Shane. No, <laughs> make a difference in a child's life. Make a, a difference in a child's life. Uh, just realize how much you can truly change someone's life just by making a, 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 a comment or, or just thinking that they believe in you because I think that's the hard part is you just want someone to believe in you. Well said. Thank you, guys. Make make sure you subscribe, like, share. Until next time, guys, peace.